In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern where we do have some potential Arctic blasts here in the eastern half of the nation towards the end of September into early October. We have a large looming threat of a tropical cyclone across the Gulf Coast and even the southeast coast where this needs to be watched really, really closely. Could be a hurricane or even a bad bad hurricanes we're going to be discussing that today and then the overall flip in the pattern things have been dry in the east for i would say over a month we do expect that to flip into the opposite direction where the west really dries up and the east sees a lot more activity now before we dive into things be sure to check out prestige weather where we're going to be doing a 99 cent for your first month deal once more it's only five bucks typically but we're doing only a dollar for your first month that's an automatic discount so you don't even need to put a code in we're doing a september photo contest in there where the winner receives 50 dollars. so be sure to check out all of that on your top right corner of your screen below this video and get signed up today at that killer price we have just unveiled brand new graphics to help deliver extremely informative and efficient forecasts for your business breaking down the snowfall forecast timing forecast and risk level for your specific location our clients have saved time and money using our services to make critical decisions gone are the headaches of tirelessly hunting down information across the internet prestige weather is here to help you and your business be sure to email us at prestige weather at gmail.com or use the calendly link in the pinned comment down below to book a meeting with me immediately we offer consulting calls texts and emails catered to your exact location of need we will be on standby during your job or event and give you updates from start to finish we also offer long range medium range and short range forecasts we can help with rainfall and snowfall forecasts plus the timing of onset and ending which is so important we pride ourselves on being highly flexible and we're always Always willing to deliver on your specific needs put a meteorologist in your pocket so you no longer have to guess what the weather will do now let's go ahead and dive into things we're taking a look here at the past seven days just to get a little bit of a refresher in where we're at on the pattern we have this strong negative pna out west which has really caused this surge of warmth into the central states and a lot of the east here especially the further north you are as you can see in the east we have held on to some of these neutral or below average temperatures throughout the deeper south and into the southeast as we have been discussing i do expect this to try to hold on maybe even through the whole month of september speaking of the whole month of september here's how that has gone to date or at least through september 19th and you can see that we are beginning to see cooling out west we started out very warm but there is been a cooler pattern as we just noted in the previous seven days that looks to cool down this west area overall the warmest warmest pocket i would say is here across the northern plains upper midwest even northern rockies here where we have had just an above average temperature month overall so far the coolest areas to date are going to be for these areas across the south central states the midwest and even into the mid-atlantic down through the southeast here this is going to continue to warm overall especially in these northern corridors once we add the next few days so keep that in mind we will review this with each other overall total snowfall through the 19th here looks as this i mean we see plenty of snowfall across the cascades and sierra nevada a couple inches for those mountaintop locations same for most of the rockies although we do have areas of up to a foot or more for the yellowstone area and even some areas in north central wyoming where there's some very tall mountains we are seeing uh, those large amounts of snowfall out there as well total precipitation over the past 14 days looks like this we see plenty of activity moving through kind of this northwest area we've seen a few storms move up through here we've seen a tropical cyclone obviously impact the gulf coast and we did see a tropical cyclone kind of move on shore to the carolinas here bringing some above average activity to some of these areas here over the past 14 days let's take a look at the upcoming pattern though and there is a lot of interesting things to discuss and as we even reach towards this afternoon what we're seeing is a more major storm system over colorado here we also have a secondary low up here for canada and this is causing plenty of activity between these two areas even some pretty heavy snowfall across some of your rockies so we're going to see this added on to that total snowfall very soon we also have showers around thunderstorms as well here in the east as we have a low offshore keep that in mind your jet stream is very interesting at this point large ridge in the east here we have a decent ridge out west 
and then a bit of a trough in the areas that have been the warmest this month. So things are looking to kind of come back around closer to average for many folks. As we keep going, I want to take us straight towards tomorrow on Sunday, September 22nd. What we see is that this low over the Hudson Bay kind of takes over. We see more of a cold front look across a lot of these areas where thunderstorms and showers could be possible. And really, we're dying down as far as activity is concerned for most other areas. We do have a decent ridge out west with this kind of inverted trough here sitting over your central states. And then another ridge here across the east where some warmer, more humid air is able to make its way up the coast here. So this is your look by time of reaching tomorrow. As we reach towards Monday on September 23rd, uh, it looks like a low might be trying to develop somewhere near Illinois or Missouri. We'll have to see if that ends up happening, but that could spell a warm front look here, cold front look there, which would really hinder the colder air, especially if you're in the north. As we see this warm rising motion start up again in the cold sinking air back to the west, we could kind of end up right back where we started. Uh, I would expect thunderstorms to be highly probable here for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and definitely possible here for these more northern counterparts, although showers would be the more likely precipitation type for those northern areas. Tuesday, we kind of see what I'm saying. We get some lower pressure, especially overnight. Monday into Tuesday, we never really get a strong low in there. Uh, but we do get kind of the same effect here. I mean, a cold front trying to set up underneath. Warm front trying to take place here to the east. So something like this, I suspect, is what we're seeing take place here with the cold air trying to swing in underneath. This is all really aided by this huge ridge out west. Now we have way less of a southeast ridge. We do have it there, especially if you're in this very far southeast corridor. But mostly we're seeing cooler temperatures for the central and more neutral here throughout a lot of your northeast and mid-Atlantic with storminess here located across all of these areas, of course. By the time we reach Wednesday on September 25th, we see that storms are really common here in the mid-Atlantic and northeast on this model run and also for the south central states as we see kind of the lingering impacts of that storm system. Your trough is still inverted towards the south central states and we are seeing the majority of the cooler air head into there. We are seeing some reach towards the eastern seaboard here as well kind of accompanied by this storminess that is located there and also for the south central states still. Our tropical cyclone on this model is located over the Yucatan Peninsula. We can see there's plenty of moisture around it as well and we're going to be watching the, the entire Gulf coastline for potential impacts from that system. Thursday on the 26th as you can see the continental United States is not seeing too much action unless you're in the northeast here where we do have a very very weak nor'easter hardly would call it a nor'easter but showers Maybe some heavier sustained rainfall in there as well with a little bit of winds, but nothing too major. That is taking place for New England especially. We see our tropical cyclone here, and we do see some tropical downpours perhaps taking place nearby that western Gulf of Mexico. Again, we've talked time and time again about how this European model wants to bring it west. The GFS model is much more north and east with it, so there is still that disparity. Uh, as we reach towards Friday afternoon, we do see this system strengthening in the Gulf of Mexico, though, 999 right in the middle and we see so much moisture there's so much warm water in here and i would expect this to rapidly develop here across the gulf of mexico from this point thursday friday time frame we do see a stronger nor'easter again located offshore of new england in the northeast there showers rainfall overall wind could be a threat there going to be kind of a dreary uh end to your week mid to late point of that week we do see a strong storm system for Western Canada. This is lingering effects down into the Cascades. Also snowfall across the Canadian Cascades and some of the Canadian Rockies as well there. Saturday, here on September 28th, we see our low in the Gulf is continuing to strengthen 994 here, uh, bringing heavy rainfall to the north and to the east of this system especially. So this would spell trouble for Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida as far as heavy precipitation here. Your low offshore of the East Coast kind of just sits tight, weakened a bit, still a very interesting storm. And we actually do have a pretty decent trough there for the West. Large ridge over the central states once again, and then a dipping trough here, meaning colder air for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, but really warm if you're west of that area. Could be the trend here according to this model. Very far out, so take it with a grain of salt. We end up getting a strike somewhere along that Florida panhandle, perhaps, with this system. That is going to come Sunday into Monday, the 29th into the 30th of September. According to this model, is I think is the most important disclaimer. 980, very strong low, 
heavy rainfall throughout a lot of the southeast here and this would be a troublemaker this would be heavy rainfall potential flooding storm surge strong winds as this would possibly be a high-end tropical storm category one category two type storm this could be another impactful one coming out of the gulf now we do have a little bit of a more stationary frontal boundary here making an s curve across your uh, kind of northern plains into the southern plains of canada this could help pour in some cold behind it we'll have to see what that does here we only have a couple more days of frames here but here is monday and you can see this storm would bring impacts further up the east coast as well the lower appalachian mountain range some of the southern mid-atlantic here northern north uh northern southeast better yet seeing heavy rainfall from this system and it's still a 990 holding on to a lot of its intensity there up the east coast we don't really get much further than this this is the final frame um, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going to happen from this point on this European model, unfortunately. Total rainfall, obviously, pretty decent along your Pacific Northwest, but really high and dry out west overall outside of there. I mean, almost no precipitation. I would say the highest above normal precipitation is going to come in this corridor. And I'm going to leave the drawings on. Let's just go over to the averages. And there we go. Kind of what I was discussing. Very dry outside of these bubbles. We do see a little bit of a dry pocket from Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. Keep in mind that if this tropical system were to track into this area, that would drastically change that forecast. So even though this is for the entire upcoming 15 days, there is a huge question mark in the track and intensity of that tropical cyclone. And that could shake up this particular graphic, especially. We do see uh, pretty highly above average amounts from the Central Plains, Southern Midwest, Ohio Valley, some of the Southern Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic. Uh, and even some of the deeper south areas here and then from your tropical cyclone we see up the east coast here seeing very high amounts so definitely could see a big flip in the pattern the blues are i mean two to five uh inches above average for this 15 day period that would be very extreme especially for this fall time snowfall we do still expect a couple of inches maybe a dusting here for the cascades rocky same story maybe 10 plus in a couple of locations so let's just zoom in a little bit here and we see for some of your central wyoming mountain areas we see that also colorado seeing quite a bit of snowfall there definitely going to be a decent upcoming 10 days the temperature pattern looks like this again cold out west warm in the east we kind of get the trend here let's see how things progress and we see our first miniature frontal boundary almost arctic blast move in uh from wednesday thursday friday time frame not too much in the way of sustained cold uh, we do see this tropical cyclone begins to bring colder temperatures along the eastern seaboard as it strikes that is definitely a factor as we've seen a few times so far this fall so definitely something to pay close attention to as we keep going though we see a true arctic blast want to move in right around that october 1st second third time frame look at this frame very warm out west this is going to be a healthy positive pna Notice the how east-based that cooldown is. Uh, you kind of wonder why, right? And the reason being is because this positive PNA is so east-based, it forces everything a little bit further eastward than normal. This would be a pretty depressing pattern in the winter, as typically you would see a jet stream uh, further offshore here. And this is the type of pattern that if it sets up in the winter, I mean, it's cold enough for snow along the east coast, but that storm is way out here. Uh, so you can't really get the precipitation mashed up with the snowfall. So let's be thankful, cold and snow lovers, that this is happening in October, perhaps not, you know, December, January, February. Uh, I will take the cold, though. I love the crisp weather, and it holds on. Here's the 4th, 5th, 6th. I mean, we have a second one on the way, perhaps around that 7th of October time frame. So perhaps a colder month uh, on the way here overall. Definitely very, very interesting uh, to see. A big flip in the pattern overall. Here's the long range look, and we're going to just take a big look at this. This is the 22nd through the 27th. Here's the 27th through the 2nd. Here's the 2nd through the 7th. So on our long range guidance, we're getting some reassurance that, hey, this forecast is on to something, what the GFS model was showing. The CFS model, which is completely different, showing the same thing. So even though it's long range, we are getting pretty good agreement here, which definitely bodes well to the colder uh, idea of October. Here's the 7th through the 12th, a lot of the same. The 12th through the 17th warming a little bit, but not by much. Finally, by the end of October, we get a little bit of a brief warmer period, it looks like, from the 17th through the 22nd. But here's the 22nd through the 27th, kind of closing things out the same way we started, much below normal. Maybe even starting out November here. This is October 31st, Halloween, in towards November 3rd, or November 5th, better yet, and we have colder temperatures overall prevailing here 
across much of the east. Overall, the next 30 days, so September 22nd through October 22nd, we see a colder look in the east, warmer out west being trended here. Very interesting development. Here is the overall tropics according to the National Hurricane Center's seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Obviously, the main issue here is going to be this Gulf one, and we currently sit at a 0% chance over the next 48 hours. You know, we watch the models. Obviously, this is not expected over the next two days. But over the next seven, we do have a medium 60% chance of development. This has been consistently increasing every single day, and I always tell you guys to watch out for that. Uh, and don't be surprised if tomorrow's video, this is a code red 70% chance of development. We're going to be watching this one ever so closely as it could be one of the more impactful systems of the season if it absolutely develops the way the models are showing. We see a couple of yellow risks here, so more lower risks, and we see this one here, 10% chance both over the next two days and seven days, likely not going to develop, very low chance. And then this one's a 0% chance across the board. Don't even know why it's on the screen. Still the remnants of Gordon. We're talking things two weeks ago, so very interesting. We do have this area off of Africa, and we've been talking about this one a little bit here recently. This one has a 0% chance over the next 48 hours as well, but we do see a 40% chance over the next seven days. Perhaps another system to watch here during this mid to late hurricane season time frame. Very interesting. I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled. I'm sure you guys will as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.